Yet another of the venerable and celebrated 44 trails, Cook's Meadow, at least in its current form, represents a new addition to this system. Here's the upshot to Cook's Meadow. If you're planning on shuttling Dog oh, yeah. River between midsummer and early fall, then it behooves you to drive up Lookout Mountain Road and add about eight miles of mostly downhill to what already amounts to an epic and rewarding shuttle. Seriously, don't question it. Just do it. You can thank me later. Okay. If you've done the Dog River shuttle, you know how to get to the 4400 road entrance to the top of Dog River. Well, about a tenth of a mile up the 44 road from the Dog River parking area is the entrance to Lookout Mountain Road. Lookout Mountain Road is just a regular old gravel forest service road that leads you to Lookout Mountain. Astute observers, or those familiar with the 44 trails, already know about the Lookout Mountain Trail because it's the one that leads you all the way to that kind of high wilderness area where you then wonder what to do with yourself before just heading back the way you came. Well, as of this last summer, there's an answer to that question. You ride down Cook's Meadow, because the Cook's Meadow Trail has been extended all the way to the Lookout Mountain parking area at the top. So, let's assume that you found your way to the top of Lookout Mountain Road. If you were looking for the Lookout Mountain Trail, you would head east. But you're not looking for the Lookout Mountain Trail because you parked your car down at the bottom of Dog River. The new top of Cook's Meadow is located just barely west of the intersection of Lookout Mountain Road and the 4220 Road. So there you go. Punch in on the first obvious trail entrance you see up here. The top of Cook's Meadow is like Surveyor's Ridge and Phil's Trail had a baby and all with a nice rustic gun buffed surface. For whatever reason, the land manager here didn't force the trail builders to scrape off the top layer of duff. Instead, this trail is mostly just roughed in. A clear path has been carved through the woods, but not too much sculpting has been done. I'm sure that more tweaking is planned for the seasons to come, but for now, this section of the trail is so fun. It is so much fun. Duffy Single Track is one of the funnest riding experiences you can possibly have, and you should absolutely avail yourself of the opportunity to ride it if you haven't. Aside from the rustic surface, another notable feature of this new section of trail is that while it's certainly not built to check your speed per se, it isn't built to just let you bomb it either. You've got to pay attention because there are turns and there are curves. This isn't sculpted downhill park trail. It's trail bike trail. The forest through here is a unique blend of lodgepole, ponderosa, and some hemlock, all stunted by their 5,000 foot elevation environment. It dries out fast here in the summer. It has that eerie feeling that a single spark could incinerate the whole thing. But there's also just an awful lot of biodiversity that you don't necessarily see in other forests that are this high and dry. This area is truly transitional and it's highly unique. If you're a botanical nerd, this is a forest you should definitely take the time to come and see. The trail doesn't waste any time getting out to the ridges and Meadows. Whoever routed this trail was interested in maximum exposure and maximizing the interesting. This trail meanders through many different types of forest and the meadows it cuts through are gorgeous. The landscape alone is good enough reason to come up here and ride. After about the three and a half mile mark, there is a bit of climb around the Dalles watershed. Like I said, don't think of this trail as a bomber downhill. If you ride all the way back down to the bottom of Dog River, you're going to yeah. end up climbing about 800 feet inside of that descent. So wear your chamois. The top of Cook's Meadow is over 5,000 feet in elevation, like I said earlier, so you can't really reliably get to it until late June at the earliest. So it can be tough to find a time that you can ride this when the top isn't going to be pudding or covered in snow, but the bottom of Dog River isn't like gritty baby powder. First world problems, my friend. First world problems deal with it. The trail crosses the 44 road at about the seven mile mark. At this point, you'll want to take a left on the Surveyor's Ridge Trail. After about a mile on that trail, you'll come to the Dog River parking area. After that, you know what to do. If you don't know, there's another video on it located on this channel. Spoiler alert, go down the hill. You, you go down the hill. So seriously, this new top section of Cook's is fantastic, and it's a much appreciated as well as badly needed addition to the 44 trails. Now you can get like almost, it's almost 4,000 feet, let's say 3,500 feet of descent from one shuttle. And you could possibly, you could, you could probably still pull off two of these in a day if you're ambitious, sort of like the Dog River shuttle. I mean, it doesn't add that much more time. So like, so do it. So, so, so do it, add, add, do, do this twice in a day. Try to do it three times in a day and leave me a comment if you do. So I'm glad you're finding these videos helpful. And if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Now get out there and go ride your bike.